Hi everybody, I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. Good evening and welcome to London, England. We're at the Royal London Theatre for a much anticipated main event. Ten rounds in the Bantamweight division. We are looking forward to this fight, especially after seeing what happened at the weigh-in yesterday. A stare down that nearly resulted in a bout breaking out right there. Now they get to do it for real. All right, fellas, let's have a good clean fight. Touch him up and let's go. You got this. Well, we'll get to know you here in the opening round scheduled for 10. The Brown Bombers coming up with the answers, avoiding that punch. Come on, kid, focus! Good left there. Keep working the jab. Good, good! Round Bombers showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. Oh. Blocks the headshot. Halfway through round number one. And now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Now his opponent got away from that uppercut. Come on, get busted! Good job protecting himself. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. Last 10 seconds of this first round. The Brown Bombers way off the mark. That punch didn't have a chance. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue and red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Right? Set up the power shot. It's there for you. When he moves in, it's there for you. All right. Listen. Here we go. Round two is underway. Brown Bomber's movements really helping him out, avoiding that punch. You know, we only show up when it's time to watch them do their thing for the fight, but they're really working at it day in and day out just to make weight. What's so tough about making weight in boxing? Well, it can weigh you down. I mean, it takes discipline. And all of a sudden, it allows you a trail of excuses because now you can start to say, well, gee, you know, I didn't do this, you know, I, I, it's the drudgery of it and it's the consistency of it. When you have to stay at a weight and you have to watch that weight, you have to balance it where you're also gonna be able to have a physicality when you get in the ring. You don't wanna be weak, so you wanna get that right balance where you're disciplined, you get the weight down, but you don't lose that physical edge. 
And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. Another clinch. The Brown Bomber is showing you a little defensive skill there, and they'll move away from that punch. Final 10 seconds of round number two. He's hooking to the body. Where's your hook at? Come on now. You're stronger than him. You need to hook to the body. Keep boxing just like that. You want to take this one. You got to watch the water in the corner. Too much. Number three is underway. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Just like that. Just like that. You got this one. seconds to go here in this round. Nice strike after catching one by Raging Bull. Focus. And now just wasting away some time with that clinch. holding here's one for you now he says right back with the left hand last 10 seconds of round number three and round three comes to an end to move your head more side to side okay i want to see that head move all right, look great. Just don't get crazy in there. Box smart for me. Let's go. What are you waiting for? You want this fight? Then let's get moving out there. ahead on Teddy's scorecard as we start round number four, but I still think that either fighter could take complete control of this fight. He's up a round right now. Keep moving, keep moving. Beat him to the punch. Move your head. Throwing a lot of punches here. Now his opponent is showing very, very good movement. What adjustments can he make to deal with that movement? Well, Joe, when you're fighting a guy who's smart, who's hard to hit, first of all, you gotta shorten those punches up. If they're wide, they have no chance at all. And you gotta go to the one place that's not moving. Guess where that is? Downstairs. And he just holds <gasps> on there. Keep moving, keep moving. That focus. Come on, kid, focus. The Brown Bomber's been stunned. Finish with the hook. Now hugging on the inside. Flush right hand to the head.
Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Seconds to go in the fourth. The Brown Bombers defense. Is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. End of the round, and he's had better rounds in the fight than the one we just saw, but still, it's very much there for the taking. Yeah, whoever finishes off strongly in the late parts of these rounds, a lot of times, you know, the judges get mesmerized a little bit here, too. You know, it's a real close fight, and you kind of forgot where the separation was. And whoever grabs the last part of the round, that's who you remember. It's very important in this kind of fight, finish up good at the end of the round. Brown Bombers corner did a good job during those 60 seconds between rounds. You can tell that he's a fresh fighter, not the fighter that was clearly dazed in the last round. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing 101, counter punching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. Missed the body shot. Back to the body. He took a go of it to the body, but came up empty. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Ellie ties up there. Keep working the body. Just an excessive amount of holding here. Just much too much clinching. Threw the straight right hand, but didn't score with it. to the end of round number five, last 10 seconds. The Brown Bombers putting forth an effort, but he's not being effective in that regard. No, he's not. He's not landing when he needs to land. And it kind of reminds, he's a banger too. He can punch a little. It reminds me of an old saying that a trainer once told me. It doesn't mean anything to have a big punch. It's kind of like having a military weapon, a bomb. What good is it if you don't have a missile to get it to the target? Right now, away. he needs a Come missile on. to get this that punch. He needs to set it up, you and he's not doing around. that. You gotta move your hands in there. All right, let's go. Watch the water in the corner. Keep yeah. your hands up, all right? You, you have to keep your hands up. Sixth round now underway. <laughs> let's see who can really come on here in the second half of this fight. Snaps that jab out. You see him holding on. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body. Oh, and a big right hand lands. He turned things around, and now his opponent has to be asking himself questions. Yeah, he's got to be saying, what do I have to do to get rid of this guy? Showing you some defense there with the block. What fight to that right hand by the Brown Bomber. What? What? Why is his opponent struggling so much here? Why can he not land a clean headshot? Well, one reason is 
His opponent is moving his head. He's doing a good job of being elusive, but there's no change. He's just throwing straight, naked punches at him. He needs to make a little adjustment, a little adaptation. He needs to feint a little bit, get a false movement, get him out of position, get him off balance, and then time him a little bit. He keeps just throwing at him. He's going to keep doing what he's doing, move air around. down the final moments of this round. What a difference from corner to corner as he sits on his stool. He knows that he is in complete control of this fight, peppering his opponent with power shots. Well, it's been like that all night long. Anything he throws finds a target. You don't need that, I'll throw that away. The Brown Bombers recovered nicely here. The start of this round, and he is proving to me at least that what happened in that last round is having no effect on this round. the floor <laughs> distance such a key factor always Teddy when it comes to defense with his good foot movement he's use been keeping ring, that distance his opponent how does he close that gap properly well first of all he's got to use his jab to close it because he's getting picked off coming in he's getting pot shot so he's got to have something coming at his opponent that keeps him distracted use that jab now don't use it conventionally Joe you're jabbing at the head you're not finding nothing you're just finding space so jab a little lower. Drop the sights a little bit. Jab at his chest. Just so you touch something, and then you can work your way in. You can start to find them a little. to go in the seventh. And round seven comes to an end. There you go. All right, breathe. Deep breath. Get some water. You good? You all right? Breathe for me. Good. Now listen. You threw a wide punch out there and he caught you. Tighten up your... The Brown Bombers down on Teddy's scorecard as we start round number eight. Worse than that, though, this is almost a crime. Has he even tried? He's got tons of energy left. Has he even asked himself if he can get in a better position? No, somebody needs to remind him that this is not horseshoes. You know, you don't get points for getting close to that peg. You got to get to the peg. He's got that certain something that's a well-acquired skill in this craft of boxing, and that is superb defense, and it's on target tonight. It is. The old-timers would say, you know, that's the hard thing, to learn defense. You know, the easy part, the fun part, is let your hands go. So he's got the hard part down. Guess what? He's enjoying the fun part right now because... He takes one but gives one. Good work by the Brown Bomber. Move, guys. 
hand. Ninety seconds to go, halfway through round eight. And just grabbing on to his opponent. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Needs to improve that accuracy. Miss with the headshot. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. Hands up, hands up. Clock counting down here in round number eight. Ten seconds to go. Well, that's yet another round that he won, and Teddy, he's in great shape. Now. Well, what were you how hearing out of his training guy, camp as right? to how he got so conditioned? Got well, we were hearing yeah, that he was doing his road work, wearing knapsacks with 20 Don't pounds of sand in running uphill. I mean, that's one of them. Also, instead of taking minute rest and sparring, he was taking 20 seconds, 30 second rest. It's showing right now. Nice round. That was good. Keep that up if you have to. You're looking good. And keep it up. Keep those hands moving. Another round. Will it go in another one-way direction? It's been a one-sided fight so far tonight. Not able to land the headshot. Keep working the body. Left and right. Left and right. Well, Keep that was his intention, distance. and that's what he's Keep doing. Not engaging in the fight, but clinching. <laughs> Digs in with a good, solid uppercut after taking a shot. <laughs> 90 seconds into the ninth round. A headshot blocked. Great job of protecting himself. He's keeping his one. guard up very, very well. Teddy, does it help to have the speed that he has? Uh, sure. Anytime you have speed and you can put it into the equation where whatever you're doing, Keep it has to be technically down. right, good, but now good. you put speed, you're doing it even better. You're doing it at a higher level. The Brown Bombers swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. There you go. Uppercut. Keep doing what you're doing. Back to the body. Well, you could see what he wanted to do there, but unable to land that body shot. Last 10 seconds of the ninth round. And that's the end of round nine. You sit ringside long enough and you get a sense at what the scorecards are going to look like. I mean, sometimes they throw you off a little bit. But we know who should be ahead on the scorecards in this fight. Yeah, and he does too, and his opponent does too, and you see it in his body language. He's starting to get a little discouraged a little bit. And of course, you see also that the guy winning right now, he's starting to behave like a guy that's winning. He's staying outside a little more, using those feet a little bit more, almost going into that kind of prevent defense you see in football. They've come this far, now only one round to go. Tenth round upon us. Defense, more defense. And he ties up on the inside. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. And now looking to hang on. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. 
And out of nowhere, things can turn like that, Teddy. Everything was looking good. Now it's looking bad for him. Well, that's exactly why, because nothing was coming at him. His opponent wasn't throwing back. He got a little lax, and he paid a price. The Brown Bombers killing me watching him here. I mean, he doesn't need a 20 by 20 ring. They could fight this thing in like a phone booth here. No, he looks like one of those cars you see on the side Finish of the road where the they removed all the tires, all the <laughs> wheels. He's not going anywhere. Focus. Cover up, cover Halfway up. through this 10th and final round. Let it go. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Final minute of the final round. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. That's it, just like that. Nice work, nice work. The Brown Bombers movement helped out there. He avoided that punch. Keep moving, keep moving. There's a straight right hand. And they will bring it home in the last 10 seconds of this final round. Keep that hand moving. Well, you should have your judge's license taken away if you don't see this one the obvious way, Teddy. If one of these judges dare go another direction with this, I want their picture up on a post office board. Most wanted poster. Yes, sir. Well, right now, what we want is to hear those obvious scorecards, so let's send it up to the ring. Listen, he was the better fighter. He was the busier fighter. He's the fighter that absolutely deserves to have that unanimous decision go the way it did. And you never like to say this. I say it in jest, but this is one where you could have made up the scorecards before the fight. Unfortunately, sometimes these judges do. But tonight... It turned out okay. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great night.